Hello, everybody. My name is Kenny Townsend. I am the Director of Education and Public Programs at the Robert Russell Milton Museum located in Farmer, Virginia. And this is another edition of our Milton interview series. Today, we have the great honor of speaking with Mrs. Desiree Roots, who is singer, actress, program coordinator, who does multiple, has multiple hats. Um, and so welcome, Mrs. Desiree Roots. Hi, Desiree. Thank you. Good morning. Well, thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome. And yes, I do it all. <laughs> Absolutely does. And we're going to talk about a lot of that here today. Awesome. Before we get started, I just want to check in and see how, how things are going with you. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when this is going to be released in terms of timeline, but COVID-19 will certainly still be a household term. Um, so how are things kind of going for you? I, I think this COVID is going to be our neighbor for quite a long time. Um, we have fared pretty well. My husband and, and I are both independent contractors, so it has affected us in terms of employment. Um, I have lost, I think, total since March, um, 14 gigs. Yeah, so that was kind of hard. And initially it was the ones in March got pushed to April and then then they got pushed to May, then they got pushed to June. And now everything is June and July of 2021. Wow. So just bypassing 2020 altogether. So it's been kind of tough. I think most artists and independent contractors are feeling that same type of bite, you know, because just, just the uncertainty of the invisible demon is what I call it. So, but better safe than sorry. So um, I've had alternative ways to still share my craft and do some things out there, which has actually been a blessing and it's been a lot of fun too, so. Good. And we've first had the opportunity to, to and that's, so I'll say this, that's one of the, a big reason why I wanted to, to chat with you because I mean, I'm sure as an, as an artist, yeah, this is a very difficult, I mean, it's difficult for everybody, but yeah, as an independent contractor, as an artist, like a lot of your craft, a lot of your profession is public venues and, and, and spaces and things like that. that exactly. Is not, not, to, not to go to. And the, I've, I've been able to speak with quite a few of my friends who are artists as well. And some of them, it's, it's really hard because especially ones who either don't have family or travel a lot, it's becoming an isolation issue that's propelling them into depression. Right. So, unbeknownst to me, like not, it wasn't my mission, but I found myself putting on a new hat of being a counselor and just calling and checking in and saying, hey, how's it going? How's your mental health? You know, how are you physically, mentally? Because I know the social part is kaput. Um, but that, that's been a huge challenge for quite a few people. So. Um, I think it's a blessing to be able to just reach out and say, you know what, I got two of these things, right. those in and let's, let's chat it out. And, and, you know, hopefully at the other end of the 10, 15, 20 minutes, an hour, they feel better. So that, that's, that's been a huge thing in the past few days. Well, that is, that's very kind of you. And I, and I know, those <laughs> folks, I don't know them personally, but I'm sure they appreciate it. And I, I think that's a great example of just kind of paying it forward, you know, just checking in on folks, being continued exactly. time, even if it's through the lens of a, of a screen or, or a phone. Exactly, exactly. Because I, you know, I, I have many, many people that check on me, my family, extended, you know, immediate. So, and like you say, you have to pay it forward because this time, which we have never seen before, hopefully we'll never see it again. But I think it's going to hang around for a while. Yeah, I think we'll probably just have to learn to to live with it, and hopefully they come up with a vaccine quickly and and, and all that and all that stuff. Exactly. But since we're kind of on the topic of, of you sharing sharing your voice, uh, when let's take why don't you take us back a little bit. When did you when did your performing career begin? What would you say? 
Oh my goodness. Um, well, if we go to the beginning, beginning, my mom said I came out humming, which I, I honestly did not believe until I had my daughter. And <laughs> when the doc, doctor smacked her little bottom and she went, ah, and I said, did she just sing an A flat? And everybody in the delivery room bust out laughing. So I was like, okay, mom, I believe you now. But um, I remember, of course, starting in church, singing with the Voices of Joy, which was the, the youth choir at um, my home church, Cedar Street. And I used to always credit my choir director for me choosing a career in music because I was supposed to sing a solo to a, there's a bright side somewhere. And my, um, the organist started playing the intro and I did not start singing. And so Miss Hurt looked at me and she looked at the organist and she started the intro again. Um, I did not start singing. And so Miss Hurt said, please, Desiree, come on. And she pulled a dollar out her purse. And she said, if you sing, I'll give you this. And so I started chirping, there's a bright side somewhere. So <laughs> every time I, I see her, I was like, yeah, you were the one that got me started singing for a dollar. <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's when I was five. And oh. I did my first professional theater production when I was 12. Um, I actually, I went to audition for The Wiz. The, there was a dinner theater here, Haymarket Dinner Theater. Um, they were known for having the best spoon bread in the South. I mean, it was amazing. And they had auditions and I knew nothing about The Wiz or Stephanie Mills or anything on Broadway. I, you know, I, but of course I associated it with The Wizard of Oz. Right. And so my thing is I wanted to be a munchkin. Oh, so yeah. I went to audition to be a munchkin. And when I got home, the director called my parents to ask if I would be interested in singing for Dorothy. And wow. I got upset. Because I was like, well, what about the munchkin? And me and my brother went. And my brother is like, oh, you're so stupid. They want you to be the lead character. So I'm like, oh, okay. And so, you know, it's crazy. And so I go back in for audition number two, three, four. I want, they had like over 300 something people audition. Wow for Dorothy and like other lead roles. Mm -hmm. And um, I think maybe about a month and a half later, I got the call that I got the part of Dorothy. So that's, and that's the, the bug bit me hard because after that, um, and, and a lot of the, the lead characters that I performed with, they went on to Broadway because our run was three, it was like three months, three weeks, and two days. And the national touring company from New York came to see our production. And literally everybody in our production, they hired to do the national tour. The, the person that was Glenda, the Scarecrow, the Lion, the Tin Man, the Wiz, everybody got picked up to do the national tour. Of course, they asked if I could go but I was 13. I turned 13 during the run and my parents were like, nope. So I wasn't allowed to go, but you know, I, I understand it now, but initially I didn't. I called my running away from home. And I, I, I went across the street to my cousin's house. <laughs> And then I was upset because my parents didn't come looking for me. Unbeknownst to me, my cousins had called and said I was over there, you know. So I, I spent a day over there sulking because they wouldn't let me run off with the Broadway people. <laughs> but that's how it all got started. And here we are 36 years later, I think. Yeah, and I'm still doing it, so. That is amazing. A funny story is this past summer, uh, 
2019, um, Virginia Repertory Theater did The Wiz. Mm -hmm. And so it's like my 35 year anniversary of being Dorothy. And I was cast as Auntie M, Ada Pearl, the Good Witch, and Mm -hmm. Eveline, the Wicked Witch. So came back and did three characters. Yeah, so that was a lot of fun to to have my my anniversary of being bit by the bug as coming back to be these iconic characters, especially Eveline. That was such a fun role to play. Yeah. I, we had tickets. Um, we loved going to Virginia Rep shows. Um, I we, remember we, you we mentioning it. We, yeah. we ended up going. We had to sell them to a friend. Um, I think wow. so. My daughter got sick or something like that, so we ended up not being able to, to go, but I, I missed that one. But I will take this time to plug the first time I saw you perform, which is before I even knew who you, who you were, um, uh-huh. in a certain, uh, played a certain dream girl uh, at one of my favorite performances oh, <laughs> I've ever <wow>. watched. <laughs> watched live uh, and watching you stand up there. Uh, I'm not going to sing it because I can't sing, but. Uh, you're going to love me and get a standing ovation. That was a, a beautiful. <laughs> that I, I will honestly say that is a role that I did not have on my radar because I mean, I, of course I grew up listening to Jennifer Holiday and, and the whole dream girls, you know, um, just the, the, the rise of, of the, the show. And then of course the movie came out and Personally, when they had auditions for it, I'm thinking, you know, Dream Girls, that, that role is always um, what they call an outbreak role for, you know, some young up and coming um, singer. Uh-huh. And they had all these people to come audition. And um, I got a call from Chase Niffen, who was the director. Mm-hmm. And he was like, you know, are you interested in, in auditioning so I'm thinking maybe some other role or I don't know and I said well you know I didn't have it on my radar but sure of course I'm always up for a part and when I got in there and I started thinking about that thing and I was like "Ooh, this is one of those roles that will kill you vocally so I literally called my voice teacher first um even though I've, I've been out of, of college for over 20 years, I still stay in touch with her and, you know, call for advice and, and get information. And I said, you know, that's one of those roles where night after night after night, you have to belt, which yeah. I used to where people say, oh, are you a belter? It's like, no, I just got a big mouth, you know? <laughs> But I used to hate when people would say, you know, belt out a note or I can belt a high C or whatever. But this show, you had to belt. And so and once we got shows, to that. How many shows did you have to do? Like, I mean, it's a lot of shows. We, we did. I, I think our performances were Wednesday through Sunday with two shows Saturday. Wow. Our weekend was Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, so a lot of, that's a lot of I am telling you. <laughs> yeah. But that that was a very gratifying role, and and honestly, that the opening night, um, I was taken aback because um, when I walked out on stage, the applause started, and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> and but and then you still got to fit your lines in, you know, you of course you hold for applause, but you got to fit your lines in, and. Um, but when I got to the the end, I am telling you, um, it was immediate. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was it was amazing. There's nothing for me. There's nothing more gratifying than applause. But when it happens in the middle of a song, and you 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 gotta like hold on to that moment, you know, to the peaks, right. and then you still got like a a, a not long ways to go. <laughs> But it's so gratifying. So, you know, I'll I'll take that any day. So yeah, but that that I will honestly say that's a role that kicked my butt. Really? Yeah. Between that and um Caroline or Change, that which is an uh like a I call it an an operetta. Mm. That was that that's the production where I actually won a best vocalist in a musical oh, wow. uh, award. Yeah. 
So that was another one that totally wiped me out because the, the 11 o'clock song, um, it, it's, it was very emotional and you had to go there. You know, you had to dig deep and find a, find a moment um, that you associate with the words and the power of those words and, and cry if you can. So it was, it was a draining moment. And then you got to come back for the next scene and be fresh. So, <laughs> so yeah, but, but I've, I've, I've loved all of these productions. So it's, it's been amazing. Good. What have been some of your uh, favorite shows to be a part of? I mean, if, if not those. Um, when I did, uh, there's been so many that were just great. Beehive, <clears throat> which was one of my favorites. Um, we did that production, I want to say, either three or four different times. Um, and that's a review of a 60s musical. And we literally came out with beehives. Um, we, we did it, I want to say the first time we did it was 1995, because uh, I had braces. So that was within itself a feat to, to sing around all of the metal in my mouth. And then we did it again, I think two years later, then we did it again, uh, three years after that. And then we did it again in 2006 because I had just had my daughter. Um, but that one was fun because I got to play Aretha Franklin and Diana Ross. So it's like, how many times do you get to, to you know, represent those two icons. Um, uh, Once on this Island was also a production that I loved. Um, I played the part of T Moon, and um, that was, I think that was in 98. Um, that the, the music in that production, it was, um, it was just phenomenal. This, just the, the whole feel of the production and, and, being this tropical island princess, you know, um, that was an awesome one. And I, I was fortunate enough to do Mame, um, and I played the part of Vera Charles, Charles, who is Mame's best friend. And I was the first Black actress uh, to do that role regionally. So I, but I think you know now we have quite a bit of. Um, theaters who aren't necessarily staying with your atypical, you know, black actress, white actress. So to be able to play that role was fun, um, especially playing around with Vera because she was one person or that loved her libations. Um, I don't know if it was scotch or bourbon or vodka, but uh, <laughs> so pretending to be this lush, drunk woman was just too much fun. I think many nights uh, during that production, I had the giggles on stage. <laughs> so that that's a few of them. Um, for, for, for Theater of Virginia, which used to be housed at um, Virginia Museum, <clears throat> was actually where I became a member of the um, union, Actors' Equity Association. And that was my, actually my only dramatic production I've done like a non-musical um, or at the time I've also done Raisin in the Sun but that one was so much fun um, I was able to be in the piano lesson yeah. and that was with a whole bunch of actors from New York and California so I was like "Ooh, I'm in here with the upper echelon of people you know so that was a lot of fun uh, Smokey Joe's Cafe um, Ain't Misbehaving uh, which I, the first time I did it, I played the part of Charlene. And then the second and third time I did it, I played the, uh, oh, I forgot, Nell Carter role. So, and that's, that production is going to be coming up again soon. So looking forward to doing that next year. And so, yeah, it's, wow. it's, I've had quite a few under my belt now. <laughs> Those all picked all great ones too. I mean I once on once on this island. That's the name of the right. Yeah. That yeah. 
I didn't hear about that one until fairly recently um, when uh, Alex Newell was playing uh, on, on Broadway, I think. And uh, that's on my bucket list of, of theater shows to see now, for sure. Oh, and another one I did um, at it. It was the, at the time it was called the Virginia Center for the Performing Arts. Now it's called Dominion Energy Center Stage. But it was the reopening of that theater when it initially got refurbished. And um, I was Ludabel Gussie Mae Jenkins in Pearly. Okay. That was an amazing production as well. Just the music um, that, that it's, it's like one of those shows that you never forget. The music just stays in your head. Um, and, and Ludie Bell had such great songs. Uh, I think Melba Moore played that role on Broadway. So that was a lot of fun as well, yeah. Well, you've spoken a lot about, about iconic performers of the past, Aretha and Diana Ross. And I, and, and I believe the first time we met was when you did a performance here at Moton. And it was a tribute to the one and only Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to just ask you, and some of them you probably already named, but who are some of your inspirations, some of the people you looked up to, who maybe you may model some of your career after all your performances? I, um, I was that kid that was the oddball growing up. My dad was a jazz pianist and performer. And so, you know, while my friends were listening to Ohio Players, OJs, Parliament Funkadelics, it was my bro my big brother's favorites um i was hanging out with my dad and my uh soundtrack at the time was carmen mccray nancy wilson sarah vaughn nina simone lena horn pearl bailey um of course ella donna washington and then um a little bit of joe williams um and my mom was a lover of bluegrass music. So like Ricky Skaggs, the Barbara Mandrell and the Mandrell sisters, Kenny Rogers. So that's the stuff that I grew up listening to. And the production that we were fortunate enough to do at your um, location, thank you for having us, um, Ella at 100, I actually wrote that in celebration of Ella's 100th birthday um, because there were all of these things being done nationally. And I was like, you know what? No one's doing anything right here in Richmond. So um, collaborating with Richmond Jazz Society and Virginia Repertory Theater, they allowed little old me to put pen to paper and come up with a concept to do a tribute to her. And I ended up making it um, like a birthday celebration. So, you know, it was, and, and with some of her friends. So the end product was a 14 piece orchestra with three support characters. Uh, Scott Wichman played Frank Sinatra. Billy Dye played uh, Louis Armstrong. Um, Anthony Cosby Knowles played Nat King Cole. And of course, I was Ella. And we just had this big, huge birthday celebration. Now, this was for her centennial. And here we are four years later, and I'm still doing it. So I changed the name from Ella at 100 to Forever Ella because I was like, oh, Lord, we're going to be doing this forever. So it was like, oh, yeah. like Forever Ella. <laughs> so that's the new name of it. And we, we unfortunately, I was supposed to have been doing it um, April 24th, which was the day before her birthday of this year at Glen Allen Cultural Arts Center, but because of COVID-19, it had to be canceled. So they're gonna reschedule us for next season. So like I say, everything's moving into 2021 now. Right. And we, that concert in particular, I mean, we do a, 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 a free February kind of Black History Jazz concert. And our uh, mutual friend, Lisa Burge, kind of, she's like, you should get Desiree. And I was like, who is Desiree Roots? And that was, the question that changed <laughs> our lives forever. Um, <laughs> your concert, hands down, I mean, about 150 people um, packed. I mean, and that is probably not a big crowd for what you're used to, but 
in our museum, right. 150 people is like, we are like crammed in um, and we have never had as much since for our, our jazz concert. So that was um, an awesome experience. It, it was, that was such a beautiful backdrop to, to present this music. And I mean, your audience was amazing. So we had our, our the, the band was still talking about that. Remember when we went to Longwood? It's like, yeah, that was a good concert. They're still talking about it, so we're just like, we gotta, we gotta get her back. I said, this time, I don't know if it's gonna be a, a free uh, open to the public. We'll get a real stage and, you know, a production. Put, put a price tag on that ticket, get them to come and make some money for the school. <laughs> oh, yes. Ra fundraise, we are a nonprofit still, so we gotta <laughs> do it. <we> exactly. <laughs> Scholarship money always a fan of that because <laughs> that's how I made it through school. <laughs> Same. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Um, well that's great and I we look forward to the day when we can have it here again. Um, Thank you. Who knows when that's when that's going to be hopefully sooner rather than later. Um, exactly. I, well, I, I have, have voice will travel so whenever <laughs> you call I'll be there. <laughs> Oh, don't, don't, don't give them a concert for, uh, for free, Desiree. <laughs> that was just a little snippet. <laughs> they have a preview. Exactly. And I, you, this is a, this is kind of came up from when you said have voice will travel, but like you, you be hustling. Like you, I remember that concert, it was here in Farmville and we wrapped up at like nine, 10 o'clock at night and like you drove from here to like Hampton or something. And I was no. like, you're gonna do what? <laughs> Like exactly. I got tomorrow, I got to, you know. I had my road dog with me, my goddaughter, and because I was like, okay, as soon as we leave, we we got to hit hit the road. So we got to Hampton. Uh, I think that was like a two, maybe two and a half hour drive, mm -hmm. and um, and we did the same concert. Um, well, the full Ella at one hundred production at American Theater that next night. So we did two concerts that day. So. So good, sorry. As I'm I'm so used to it. <laughs> I was gonna say this kind of brings up a question I, I didn't initially think I would ask, but I'm I'm now curious, like you've been in the profession for a while. I mean, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who is either thinking about it or kind of does stuff here and there but hasn't really, you know, committed to a career now? What what kind of advice would you give somebody who's new to performance arts or wants to explore it as a profession? I would say never let a no be your last no. You're going to get many of those before you finally get a yes. And then you'll get another yes and another yes. If it's what you're passionate about, if it's what you think of more than 50% of the day, if it's what makes you feel happy, then go for it. I honestly didn't think that it would be my career path. I initially started out wanting to be a doctor. I had a pre-med scholarship and I was gonna find a cure for cancer. And um, my between my science and my business teacher, um, she pulled me aside and said, I don't think that's your calling. And you know, back then I had like, much attitude how dare you tell me i'm gonna be a doctor and she called uh dr odell hobbs at virginia union university to come meet me at school and she said just sing one song for him i was like oh okay and uh he came and we met in the choir room and i sang evergreen because i that was another iconic person that I loved. I used to tell people she was my other mother, Barbara Streisand. And um, I sang Evergreen and, you know, and we talked about just music and me growing up with music. And a week later, I had full scholarship to Virginia Union University. And um, from there, you know, so I'm thinking, okay, let's see, doctor, another eight to 10 years of school, or just go to school and sing every day for four years. It was not just sing every day. <laughs> right. It was music 
theory, music composition, music education, psychology, history of music, but I loved every minute of it. And that's what helped to build, I think, the, the what I will say, the portfolio of the background of my life, because I grew up of course, singing in church, and then having that foundation to stand on or the building steps to building a career in music. Um, but Oprah Winfrey said something quite a few years ago that changed my life and literally propelled me into doing music and entertainment full time. And it was simply, what's the one thing that you would do for the rest of your life free? And for me, that was singing. And so I said, you know, that's what I'm going to do. And it seems like once I made that decision, um, doors just started opening for everything. I started getting calls for doing on-camera commercials. Mm -hmm. And I always thought I was too short to be in a commercial. And then the guy was, I remember the producer saying, well, uh, many people don't know that if you're short, it's actually better for the camera because we don't have to manipulate it as much. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I getting, I thought about Luther Vandross because he did quite a few uh, commercial type gigs and jingles, um, you know, before he took off. So mm -hmm. I started getting a lot of calls for that. And then I, I got a call to do a, um, a national tour. It was a production um, that, that had a, a gospel message. Um, and then that, so that was my first, uh, my baptism into national touring. It was okay, but you know, and then from that, I just, it's literally been like production, production, production. I, I think I've been, yeah, this year has been 36 years and I think I've done like 38 or 39 musical productions. So that averages one production per year, right. um, not more. And, um, uh-oh, did I zap out? There you yeah. go. <laughs> and so it's just, it's been a blessing. Um, but I would definitely say if it's what you're passionate about, follow that passion, see it through. You know, if if you continue to reach for the moon and you miss you're still amongst the stars and being amongst the stars is not a bad place to be so just go for it i am not a singer i used to sing as a child and then my voice started to change and i was like well now i'm a bass and unless i'm melvin franklin from the temptations nobody's gonna want me <laughs> even if that wasn't true i get that sense <laughs> in there come on come on <laughs> <laughs> I, do feel, I feel inspired from those words, and I'm not even a, a singer. <laughs> I, I do appreciate those, and I, and I think those are powerful. Uh, Thank you. You mentioned earlier, kind of going towards closing, um, of, of other stuff that, that you may be working on now. I, I just want you to have a, a, a chance to, you know, what, what kind of projects you're working on now, what you have coming up in the future, and how can people support you, and not only you, but other performers, you know. In, right. Yeah. Um, I just finished a series um, for Richmond Performing Arts Alliance. We have um, these productions that are called Legends on Grace. And I did one this past season where it was a Motown production. Um, prior to that, I did Forever Ella. Um, and prior to that, I did a cabaret for them. So this next one coming up is going to be um, focused on Broadway musicals. And I'm hoping because of COVID that that's not canceled. So that should have been coming up this coming October. Um, I also have Forever Ella that's still ongoing. Um, you can probably keep up with... Um, those productions or what's coming up with my, I have Facebook, Desiree Roots. Um, you can find me at Desiree Roots um, or Instagram. I, um, I think it's I am Diva Roots. <laughs> I, I have to get my daughter to remind me what my names are on, on this stuff. You know, the young kids, they keep it together for me. Um, 
the Virginia Repertory Theater. They have several productions coming up next year. I'm not sure if they've announced their season yet, but I do know there's a production of Ain't Misbehaving that will have a certain face on the stage. Um, and then I'm writing some other productions as well. So we've lost quite a few icons. I've, I just recently did um, another piece that I wrote, um, the jazz side of Aretha. And it's celebrating Aretha Franklin's jazz music that she did uh, before she crossed over to the R&B. So that's a production that I'm very proud of that's been a lot of fun to do and challenging because when she was recording her jazz music, she was like between 16 and 18 and her voice was very high. Right. And I always try to keep the music authentic so I don't change keys often. So if she's sang it in F or, you know, A flat, then that's the key I'm gonna sing it in. Right. But Lord, that entire concert, I was in the rafters. I said, you know what? This is one that I will not be doing every other weekend. <laughs> um, so that, that production, um, I've had quite a few inquiries about that. I want to do something about Nancy Wilson, Nina Simone, Natalie Cole. So quite a few things up my sleeve. Um, but if you log into... Uh, Desiree Roots on Facebook. Um, I also have the Desiree Roots or the Diva Roots on Twitter and Richmond Jazz Society, www.vajazz.org. They always have any and all information about my concert. So any of those sources will give you where I am, what time it's going to be, and how to get there. It will be well worth it. She's a phenomenal performer. And I look forward to many shows attending in the future with Miss Roots. Ah, uh, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure. And of course, we look forward to coming back down to Farmville mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and doing something at that beautiful facility. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. I told so many people about it. So I hope that that has given um, more of an insight and some travelers passing through to just see it because talk about a hidden treasure. Wow. It's absolutely gorgeous. Well, we will look forward to welcoming you back whenever we are able to. And I know whether there are masks or gloves or hazmat suits, they'll be packing <laughs> the house. Exactly. <laughs> in a few yeah. I, I'm going to be the new Howie Mandel. He, <laughs> he had it oh. together all these years you know yeah fist bump elbow dab yeah got it <laughs> i'm always until i had a kid at least i've always been a germaphobe and so like for me people are running up my hand sanitizer i'm sitting here in my house with a whole case already and it's like well i just kind of already had this <laughs> exactly you know yeah. and you learn as a parent, you know, when it's time to go back to school, the teachers always ask you to buy the gallon of sanitizer. I buy one for the school and one for the house, mm -hmm. thinking, you know, so we were very well prepared. <laughs> well, good. Well, Desiree, thank you so much for your time. I don't want to keep you much longer. Um, You're so welcome. I, it's been my pleasure. And you've been wonderful and all your insight. And I know that our viewers are going to get something a lot from this. I know I have. And Thank you. we reopen. We're going to be plugging Virginia Rep shows and uh, Richmond Jazz Society and all, all and your performances as much as we can here. Awesome. Thank you so much. And blessings to you and your family and everyone at the school. Thank you so much. You as well. Okay. Uh, stay safe. And I look forward to talking to you again in the future. Okay. Thank you. Bright moment. Okay. Uh, all right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.